Hi, I'm Melvin Way. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a plant growing series which will have many episodes in the future featuring the California wild grape. You can find these in riparian zones. I'll show you more on that later in the wild. And you want to cut a woody section of stem or vine basically, which I think might be the previous year's growth or maybe even older than that. And all this green stuff is the seasonal stuff that comes out. Um, let me try to focus on the intersection. So yeah, if I get that in the light, basically you can see that it looks really healthy inside. It's not hollow like it would be with um, the ends if you were to cut those by mistake, which I did actually a week ago. So I'm just going to have this soak in water. Uh, it might take days or weeks, but eventually it should sprout some roots at the bottom. So let's talk about what not to do. A week ago I went into the same riparian zone and got a cutting that has huge leaves. Uh, this thing is the size of a human head. But as you can see, the node is withering away. It's dying. Um, the reason is because I got ahead of myself, you know, I'm going to throw that away. Basically, it was doing well in the water. It got all perky. And I tried to put it in wet soil and used white twisty ties to tie it to that stake. And basically, within 48 hours, you have this sad state you see right here. So, here's a shorter one that still looks pretty healthy. But, you know, if I were to try to stick that in wet soil, it would befall the same fate. And, you know, the stem just looks hollow. These are the end sections of vine cuttings. And there's a shorter one as well. You know, I don't know if this is uh, going to go anywhere either. You know, I, I really don't expect these things to survive. And there's also this wooden stick that just has a very solid woody appearance. It might be several years old. It might be dead. You know, maybe it's just tissue that serves no biological function and can't regenerate. So I've heard of the method where you get a cutting that's just basically a stick like this. But I suppose you'd have to be you know, get one that's herbaceous and then you just stick it in wet soil and it'll grow. This is an example of a riparian zone. You have a big stream, well, big by Southern California standards flowing through. Have a lot of reeds growing. And nearby on all the embankments, you see a lot of California wild grapevines. This is a tiny bird's nest that I found, uh, much to my surprise, nestled uh, just three feet, maybe a meter above the forest floor or even less, very precarious position, but these are the leaves of the California wild grape. They can get huge over the size of a human head, as I mentioned, and they climb all over the trees and try to get their way to the canopy where they can absorb as much sunlight as possible. So this was built on the junction of a petiole and the vine. It's got two eggs in it. The mama bird is nowhere to be seen. And these are healthy leaves attached to a vine which has tendrils choking a poison hemlock stalk. So these are great flower primordia, I believe. It's still too early. This was taken in May of 2015. And they haven't really seemed to get any bigger over the course of a month or two. But uh, I imagine eventually they'll flower and hopefully turn into some wild grapes that passerby can eat or animals. All right, it's day 18 of this California wild grape series. And everything still looks more or less fine, although this whole thing just fell forward in its cup because it's not stable, it keeps doing that. It's really annoying. There's a leaf here that kind of went yellow. There's some brown spots. Um, maybe there's just too much transpiration pull for what this uh, wound over here can provide in water and it's turned a little brown um, instead of being you know lush green it's day 34 uh, most of the foliage is intact there was some browning in certain select spots um, I think there might be little parasites on this plant that are just things sort of akin to spider mites but 
We can talk about that later. For now, let me focus and show you there's a spider webs. Maybe a local San Marco spider spun a web. And I can point out where it lives. You know, it's basically somewhere, you know, right above my fingernail tip. You can see where the spider is. So it's caught maybe some dust and, you know, little brown dots throughout its web. Maybe it's eating something and helping out the situation and will prevent more leaf death. Uh, that bottom wound, you know, it's brown. It doesn't look green and herbaceous. There's been a great new development. Uh, root tips are sticking out beneath this node all over. All right, I just changed the water, brought the water line all the way up to here. And what I noticed was that actually the bark was sodden all the way from here to where the roots are appearing. All right, it's day 39. Outer foliage still looks very healthy, although the inner foliage looks like it's been infested by spider mites. Hence the presence of a spider there trying to capitalize on that feeding opportunity. And the way I can tell is from all the telltale fine webbing all over the vines and some of the leaves in the wild. So I guess they run amok in the wild. And if you focus on this root ball, it's coming along very nicely. Uh, it's busted open all the bark. So things are expanding and growing. That's nice. And I'm thinking of doing a transplant because I'm pretty sure if I watered in potting mix with all this covered, they would start to elongate and take up a lot of water and provide for everything this plant needs and also uptake some nutrients, micronutrients that the plant needs to actually make more tissue. There's a bit of redness for some of the bases of these roots, probably just garden variety mold that exists around my apartment. And I think I'll spray some insecticide after I do this transplant to make sure that these leaves all survive. All right, so here goes. Take this out of the cup. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut this stuff off. I don't want to go too close to the base. You know, it's got a white core, interestingly enough. You know, with some stuff coming out. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it. And I have this dirt that's uh, dry. It's been pre-sterilized, although I do have a fungus nap problem now. So, you know, a fat lot of good that does anyway. All right, so there you have it. I have this thing buried neck deep in fresh pre-sterilized soil. Some of it was sterilized for like two hours, but you know, I don't think any of that's enough because I'm seeing fungus gnats in some of my pots. So I'm just gonna use this opportunity to wash down the leaves a little and I'm sure we'll see great progress over the coming weeks. So stay tuned for my second episode in this series and so forth. This is going to go on for a really long time.